Hi guys, hope you're doing great. So our today's question is add two numbers. It's a medium difficulty level question and again one of the most top liked problems on lead code. So the question says we are given two non-empty linked lists representing two non-negative integers. The digits are stored in reverse order and each of their nodes contain a single digit. Add the two numbers and return it as a linked list, right? So I think uh, them being stored in the reverse order makes the problem easier for us because we can now just sum up those numbers and if there is a carryover, we can just add one extra node at the end and that will give us the right answer, right? You may assume the two numbers do not contain any leading zero except the number zero itself. All right. So, so I think the problem is pretty self-explanatory and we just have to sum up these two numbers. Each node in the linked list represents a digit of the number and the number is uh, stored in the reverse order uh, and we don't need to reverse the string. We need to add the numbers in the same way. So our solution, for example, here, here the number actually is 342, but it is represented in the linked list like 243 um, and similar for 465. So when we sum these up, the, the sum is 807, but we expect an output of 708, which is again reversed. So we just have to basically add up the numbers in the given two lists and return a new linked list. Okay, so um, before we start the solution, it would be a great idea to have a look at the possible approaches to solve linked list. We will keep revising this uh, list as and when we find a newer solution. Um, so I would request you to pause this video, take a look and think for yourself what is the best approach to solve this question. Okay, so I think here the solution is pretty clear, right? Um, if you look at the various uh, ways, uh, right now we just need to traverse the linked list, right? Um, uh, so we are given two linked lists, we just traverse them from start to end and just finding something which means like summing those nodes and creating a new linked list. So I think um, the answer is traverse plus optional collection. Okay. So let's start and it will get better as in when we build the solution and complete and see the answers. All right. So before we uh, jump into it, the idea that we would be using to solve the solution, get to the solution is that um, uh, we will take one dummy node, right? Uh, which will not be a part of the sum. So let's say we take a node and just assign it a value minus one or something. Um, so this approach is common to a lot of problems where there are two linked lists involved and that is why it's very important we understand this correctly. So let's say we have just created a new node which is uh, assigned it just some random value and then after that what we do is we create two pointers or let's say two list type variables pointing to this. So let's say we call it some head for our case here right now. Okay, so some head points to this, okay? And we also create something called, let's say just pointer, which we'll be using here. So, um, which also points to this, right? Now, uh, we start traversing the two linked lists one, one by one, and we take the value one that's coming from the linked list one and then we add it with the value two which is coming from the first first nodes of the two linked lists and we create a node out of it okay we create a node out of let's say for is in this example two and five which gives us seven so we create a node of seven here right um and what we do is we make the pointer point to this node and once this is done, we move the pointer forward to this node. Okay, so now our pointer comes over 
here. Okay, and so on. So we just keep moving forward in the linked lists, add their uh, nodes, and then move pointer to it, right? So like this, the pointer would at the end reach the last node of the whole summation. Um, and then when we would have to return, right? If we would return pointer, it would not be the start of the sum of the two linked lists, right? So that is why we had taken this sum head. And then at the end, one, what we need to do is we just need to return the next of this node, right? Which will be this, which will be the starting of the sum of our two linked lists. So uh, which, which we can safely say we'll return sum head dot next, which will be this, okay? So this is a very, very common um, concept that you will have to use in a lot of linked list questions. And it's very important that you understand this completely. So right now I am not going to just remove this and we'll keep it and we'll get back to it if necessary. Okay, so let's just start with the solution now. Um, we'll just take two integers, okay, uh, because we would need that to capture the value of the nodes in the linked lists and just keep them zero right now. Okay. Um, we we'll also need um, another variable called sum, which we'll be using regularly with each iteration and also a carry. So whenever there's addition, there is carry. So right now it's zero. Uh, I'll, I'll explain with the problem how we'll handle the carry at the end, okay? Um, now, as discussed, let's just create so we're given here the definition. So list node is what represents a node for this, at least for this case. So we'll have to use that. So list node of, let's see, we're, call, we're calling some head, right? Equals to new list node minus one, okay? Um, and then let's create pointer this is a PTR uh, equals to some head right and as we just discussed after we are done with everything we will be returning return some head dot next okay so now let's just see what we need to do in the middle of this so um, what we will be doing is rather than iterating only till we have elements in both the lists we will iterate till we have any element in either of the lists because if you go with the first option it it basically gets a lot of work to do after the whole uh, uh, while loop has finished right so we'll just try to take this approach okay so l1 is not equal to null okay it means it has elements or instead of and we are using or l2 is not equal to null okay so now what we do is that since we we know that this condition could be we could be in here at this statement if either of them is null so we'll have to check that so if l1 is not equals to null then v1 equals to l1 dot val which is coming from here okay the name is val um and let's just move l1 sorry about that dot next okay else we just say that v1 equals zero it means that this list is exhausted and we don't have any values. So we just make it zero. Similarly, we'll do that for L2. Okay. L2 equals to, okay, sorry, sorry. L2 equals to L2 and L2 equals to L2 dot next. Else, if again the same thing, equals to 0. Okay. So now 
we say that sum is obviously equal to v1 plus v2 plus carry. So if there is any carry from the previous operation in the first, it would not be anything and we have initialized it to zero. Um, but in the later ones, if we see if, if there's anything in the carry, we will add it to the sum, right? And this is just simple mathematics, the way we add two numbers. So basically the carry will become sum divided by 10, right? That's what we carry over. And the sum will become the remainder, correct? So if we add 6 and 4, so what we get in the sum would be like 0, which is 10 ampersand 0. And then the carry would be 10 divided by 10, which is 1, right? So, um, all right. So we create a new node, which is a temporary node. Uh, with sums value, okay. So we just do this. Just node, sorry, of sum, okay. And we do this. So so now this part is coming over here. So now we want to point pointer to this new node that we have just created. So what we do is. Um, pointer dot next equals to temp okay so we have established this link okay and then pointer equals to pointer dot next okay so now the pointer is moved to this node all right okay so now, once this whole while loop is done, we know that both the lists are exhausted, but there could be a carryover, right? Which which has not been cancelled, uh, which has not been handled. So what we'll just do is that if the carry is not equals to zero, okay? If the carry is not equal to zero, then we just need to create a node out of it in a similar fashion. Okay, and then simply make the pointer point to this step. All right. Okay, and we are returning some head dot next. Okay. So I I hope that this explanation is now making a lot of sense. Uh, and in order to run, we'll just remove this. Okay. Let's try to run and see if this works. Cool. Let's try submitting it. Okay, great. So um, this is how we add to numbers represented as linked list. The time complexity for the solution is, uh, so, so since we are traversing both the lists only once, right? And assuming that the length of one is M and the of the other is N. So it would, the time complexity would be O of maximum of M comma N, right? Um, and the space complexity would again be, um, there's a new list that we are generating out of this. So it will be like, O of maximum of M or N plus one in the worst case, if there is a carry over. So the linked list size would be that, right? The maximum of either of them plus one in, if, if there's a carry over. So this is the time and space complexity. Uh, if you really like this video, please like, share and subscribe and keep coding and take care guys.